right, good morning, guys. It is Monday. I think last time we were talking to you guys, we, uh, the broker that we did that load for, that short little run, reached out to us and said that they, uh, she had a load picking up in Thomasville going to, uh, where are we going in New York? Frankfurt. Frankfurt, New York. The rate isn't really that great, but I'll be honest, the rates right now are kind of terrible. And I'm trying to get on this broker's good side because she gets all of those loads of um, trusses out of that trust place. So it would be nice like if we could get on this chick's good side where we could start running these trusses for this woman. Um, she gave us the option to pick it up Friday or Monday. I chose Monday, Lita wasn't feeling good. Plus I wanted to change the oil in the truck and I wanted to stain the deck on the trailer. Um, got all of that done have to show you guys the trailer I mean I wouldn't hire me to, to like stain your deck or anything but there's there's stain on the deck huh yeah it's not like it doesn't look professional by by any means it's pretty streaky I uh, I messed up I did this the first time I did the trailer too the other deck boards I didn't read the instructions, and what it says is, oh, you gotta push the clutch in first, dummy. You gotta go into low gear too. Look, here's the thing. Fine. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. Uh, one, one coat's good enough, but if you want to put another coat on, um, for color reasons. You have to do it within two hours. Well, I ended up putting the first coat on the trailer when it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night because I didn't want to be out there in the blazing sun. I was like, oh, I'll just do this at night when it starts getting dark. Well, then it says two hours. You have to wait two hours between coats. So I get the first coat on, and I can tell I want a, different, a second coat on. And I remember reading something like that on the can last time I did it. I was like, dang it. Well, I read it again this time, and I'm like, dang, two hours. That's going to put me out here in the dark. So I basically went out there and did it. Went out there and put the second coat on in the dark. So, I mean, it is what it is. That's a work trip, you know. So, it's whatever, right? It's just a deck. I don't know if I told you guys. I used to buy those 55-gallon drums of Amsoil oil. And the oil's gone up like four or five hundred dollars a barrel. So I ordered a bunch of uh, five gallon buckets of Rotella T6 from uh, Amazon. And um, I saved money by subscribing so that they would send it to me every once in a while. I can't remember the very the, the, the length of time that I put for the delivery. But we didn't end up using any of that first set of oil. And they sent me the second batch and I completely forgot we were subscribed to it. So now we have like 60, 60 gallons of oil. Well, minus, so now we're down to 50 gallons of oil since I used, because I used 10 gallons of the Rotella T6. This truck takes 11 gallons. So I used 10 gallons and then I added a uh, gallon of that uh, Lucas uh, oil additive stuff for the 11th gallon, so. I don't know, anyways, we just got to Thomasville a little bit ago. Uh, we're gonna be picking up some utility trailers. So, hopefully, what is this person doing? Turning left. Oh my God, I got in the wrong lane for these idiots then. Ah, uh, yeah, anyways, all right, so we'll, we'll see you there.
All right, we've made it. Show you guys this deck. Like I said, it's not, um, it's not perfect. And you can see some blotches and some streaks. Can't really hit the sides of the boards, but I think it'll be all right. It, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect for a, for a work trailer. And then I want to repaint all this metal black again. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Ugh. So we just park here and then the forklift driver comes and gets us. Obviously it's prob probably just these little trailers that they're gonna stack up. Um, I think what I was saying earlier was hopefully it's not a big pain in the butt like it was at Big Tex. And uh, they can load us up and get us out of here a decent time so I'm pretty sure this is gonna take us through Atlanta why would it why would it take me here uh, where are we going Frankfurt but I don't have an okay address. Garmin Frankfurt New York Let's see which way it takes us which would you like? you want your best open trap buttons it's the same thing see what the options it gives us here if we can bypass Atlanta that would be fantastic that's taking us through Atlanta I bet we don't have an option we I bet we have to go through Atlanta Looks like they got a bunch of... Oh. No, that's uh, bypassing Atlanta and going up 95. Yeah. Man, that might be the way to go. Go back through Valdosta and on up. Man, I think that's going to be the way to go. through Washington. Yeah, why would it do that? Why couldn't we... Looks like there's some tolls through here, up through Scranton. I don't know. We'll take a better look at it when we get the actual address and go from there. You want me long ways here? Oh, okay.
All right, eight percent battery left, so I gotta gotta hurry up. I forgot this thing was running. That is it. So this front here was uh, 14 foot, 14 foot maybe an inch, and we were able to tighten it down. He said he was gonna take his forklift and, and scrunch it all down and uh, have us tighten it up. So let me see what I can do with my straps before we go scratching the tops of these trailers up with your forklift. But we were able to get it down to like 13.2, I think. So I was worried that they were gonna take that top piece off, but we were able to squish that, uh, that those leaf springs down enough. Probably not good for the leaf springs, I mean, you can see I've got them squished pretty hard, but something I just figured out when you're chaining down your uh, four by fours, if you use the ratcheting, I have a uh, snap binder for these, but I, I just hate it so much. It's either too tight or too loose. I can never get it right. So I went to using the snap, uh, the um, ratchet binder that I found that I was gonna give my brother and never did. Problem with these, when you go to tighten them, this part rubs on the 4x4 and it gives you resistance and it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. So what I did was I took my extra chain and I and I just let it ride on my extra chain on both sides and that kept that off the 4x4 and now I don't have to bungee that chain up because that chain is is locked under there now. So cool little trick we just figured out. Um it's probably going to be a nightmare getting out of here. I thought we could just pull through and out but they've got all this lumber sitting here and i don't know if this is an actual exit out of here or not but there's no way i can make a left hand turn out of here and there's no way i can make a right hand turn out of here so we're probably going to end up having to back all the way out of this thing all the way out to the road so hopefully we can get that done pretty light load though I think should be 20,000 pounds it said 20,000 pounds is this thing recording yeah all right so they're gonna come out here and move this wood for me he said I can try to make this turn if I can't make this turn then I can all right this GoPro died so anyways they're gonna move all this wood for us they said we can either make a turn and come out of here which I don't think we'll be able to make that turn or we can go down there and then uh, turn around. Hopefully this ain't a nightmare here. Please don't stack. Let me make sure that rear axle is dumping. No, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I didn't hook that ground wire back into it when I was fixing all those wires. I can't remember. I'll give it a shot to try to turn around here. Probably back up. Swing this thing as wide as we can. Here you go, I'll let you hold the camera. It's almost dead. Well, it, it did die on me when I was out there talking. I don't think we're going to make it. 
like it. No? We're gonna slide right into these trailers. Yeah, we are. To, uh, I might have to pull in there and back in and pull out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is he going to move the trailer? Well, that's awfully nice of him. It still bewilders me. That people order a semi truck in the places that semi truck. I mean, I, I don't know, man. This this thing takes so long to turn. move that wood because I was thinking I was gonna have to turn left here I mean that wood still would have been in the way well no he was sitting here with the wood on his forks You can tell trucks have been turning right there through the grass right there that I just went through. So they just stack trailers where they normally don't stack trailers, I guess. It's good.
Alita's uh, in there filling out the paperwork. They noticed one of these trailers don't have a, uh, she said that one of them's missing a hitch. So I don't know what's up with that, but she's getting the paperwork. They're throwing a hitch on now. At least they caught it now instead of like, that would have sucked for them for me to deliver and them notice that there wasn't a hitch on them. I mean, the hitches are welded on. How did they miss that? Must not actually be a hitch. I guess I go see. All right. So it was the guts and the tongue. One of the tongues was missing that latch to latch it on the ball. But uh, we just got a direct contact. So the forklift guy here is the one that sets up all the shipping. Did you hear that? He sets up all the shipping. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, he said, call, call him any time that we're in town and he can hook us up with loads. Uh, I found out what this load's paying. Um, this one's paying 4,100 and we're getting, I think we're getting 3,100 for this. So the broker's making a thousand dollars on this. It's a kick in the nuts. But they get all those, they get all those trusses out of that place. So. I think it ends up being like 274 a mile, which isn't great. And we just found out that it's not actually going to Frankfurt. It's going to, uh, what'd she say, Rome, New York, which is a little bit further. Did you try calling me? Yeah. Was it when I was out there talking to him? Rome, New York. I mean, should we bring it up to the broker or? I don't know, dude. That, that other load that we did was so fucking easy. I know, it's dude. Like... It was such a good paying load. That's what I was telling them. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get on this broker's good side because she gets all those loads out of there. So we need to put this address in. Okay, Garmin. Okay, Garmin. 7113 East Dominic Street, Rome, New York. You weren't fast enough. I'm saying it. Let me see it. Say it too fast, it doesn't understand what you're saying. Okay, Garmin. 7113 East Dominic Street, Rome, New York. Going to 7113. All right, so we don't want to go through Atlanta, right? So we're probably going to go back through about Austin up 95. Okay. Right? Agreed? Yeah, I guess. Or you think we should just hit 75 and go? I don't know what... I don't know. It's shorter to go. Oh, this isn't even showing 95 now. Look at that. It's completely changed. Hell, that's gonna bypass Atlanta right there. Let's do that. Yeah, we won't be going 95 then. That's so weird that it's showing a completely different route now. I mean, maybe it's traffic. Maybe it's the traffic. I don't know. Tighten these things down and just squish it, the suspension down. I don't know. I'll tell them. I'll be like, bro, we're, we're over height on the front. 